Welcome back to another video. It's Brass City v Salford City match preview. Let me know your score predictions and thoughts going into the game in the comments down below. Like the video if you do go on to do so and subscribe if you're new. All the support is massively appreciated. So let's get straight into it then with the key players coming into this game. Now, normally I would probably put Elliot Watt in this key players list, but he is suspended after a red card for a second bookable offence for dissent against the referee on Saturday, Ben Atkinson, 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 Atkinson I think it is, um, and Carl Robinson, I mean, that, I'll just talk about it now, uh, it was an absolute disgraceful performance from Salford, of uh, ill discipline, I think they had about 10 yellow cards, two red cards, the two red cards were for dissent, Elliot Watt and Vassell, I think Vassell reacted to the red card of Watt, they both went running up to him, you don't know what was said. But at the end of the day, it does epitomise the performance of Salford. They were absolutely disgraceful against Wimbledon. Um, you know, nasty team, aggressive, a, a vulgar performance. You know, they were, um, it, it was almost like watching a rugby game. You know, there, there were so many rugby tackles going on. It like watching Bradford Bulls. I thought the referee actually had a good game, to be honest. Because, because I mean, Carl Robinson came out with slate in the referee, saying um, how proud of his boys he is that you know, how aggressive they were and that's what he wants them to be playing like. And if you want them to be playing like that, then, uh, you know, you, you, you have no morals about you because uh, that, that were, it, it weren't, it, it's, it's not, that's not football. And, uh, you know, it's, they'll, they'll get a reputation for like to keep playing like that. And Salford already have a bad reputation and it seems like he wants to turn them into a mill, mill wall. But, uh, you know, that, you can't exactly be mill wall with John and his, uh, dog can you really but our referee I mean, I, 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 I've done this completely wrong but I might as well talk about our referee whilst I'm on about him he's refereed 8 league 2 games a season Jacob Miles 32 yellow cards no reds you can guarantee that will go up to 10 yellows and uh, and 2 reds again I, I, I'd figure by the way Salford play disgrace of a team um, he, he refereed a 0-0 draw for Salford against Barrow earlier on in the season and it's his first game against Bradford City never refereed against Bradford City in his career before mainly at National League level but probably as a young referee coming through so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt uh, as ever um, yeah so the key players then uh, Garbert Luke Garbert now he is just a He's just a solid left back in the league. I don't think he's I don't think he's probably top five left backs in the league, but uh he's got a good delivery, good shot on him as well, quite quite uh picks up good space up there, decent defensively, played at a good level, uh, but just pretty solid and I think it shows how far Salford have dropped off this season, but you know, one of the key players is a left back who isn't that great. Um, you know, you look at Salford's team and there's some good players in throughout, you know, Matty Lund and Ryan Watson alike as well, they don't get in there. But the, the big names, but rubbish, you know. It, they're, they're basically um, they're like McDonald's, you know. It's a, it's a big name, big brand, and everyone gets it. You know, even I do sometimes. I'll have a Big Mac, but it's rubbish food, and I don't like it. When you look more into it, it tastes awful, you know. I, I'd rather have a quarter pounder from the freezer, one of mine, because. Uh, you know, the, the nice you put a few, uh, you know, onions on it, and uh, but not 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 diced, on, not sliced onions. It's um, you know, one of those crunchy onions that that are good ones, and then your own sauce and bit bit your own put your own stuff on it, and it, it's lovely. McDonald's and Big Macs, it's it's rubbish food, and uh, it, that, that's that's what Salford's like. You know, you've got these big names, Premier League players, and you know, Championship players, players who you you look at the names and you think that they're a good team. And they're not, you, you know. You look at the surface, and, and they're not. Um, anyway, Callum Hendry, he had a good season last season, and um, Matt Smith obviously were there last season as well. He, he was all right last season, Matt Smith, but this season he's gone and done unbelievable things and scored some really good goals. But the consistency of his goal scoring has been something that you could see. But we're mainly under Neil Wood because he's since been dropped recently under Carl Robinson. Not really too sure why, but I can only put it together that Callum Hendry is a bit more. Uh, agile, bit pacey, and he's much better at pressing. And like I said, they're quite an aggressive team, Salford, under Carl Robinson and uh, Matt Smith. Ain't gonna be able to to run his socks off. But Elliot Watt and Matt Smith are both out of contract in the summer. As a Bradford City fan, Elliot Watt, you know, he was divided. Uh, you, you know, he, he was Marmite. You know, he was um, he was probably McDonald's. You know, I don't like McDonald's. A lot of people be going, oh, how can you say that about McDonald's? 
I don't like it. So, you know, it, it was probably McDonald's then, uh, Elliot Watt at Bradford City. I liked him, I, I really rated him. A lot of fans didn't, he'd never come back and I don't think I'd want him back, to be honest now, because uh, wouldn't it, the style of play wouldn't suit him under Alexander. If we had a Mike Hughes manager, I probably would think more about it, but at the same time, um, you know, the, the way he left, you know, you, you don't forget things like that. So, uh, yeah, um, and Matt Smith, of course. 36, I think he'd be in June. I'm not sure I'd want that, but the profile striker I want, but he's still scoring goals. So let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. Uh, but yeah, he has been dropped for Callum Andrew, who uh, ain't been great. He ain't been great this season. Missed a really good chance on the weekend as well. Mac Connor McElhenney, he's got three goals in his last nine against us. Uh, you know, he's, he's an S house. He's energetic. He picks up good pockets of space, has a good shot on him. He's a, he's a really good player at this level player that you know we've been linked to a couple of times and I, I would have quite liked him but uh yeah he's, he's, he's a good player uh Conor McElhenney their last five results then um they were on a decent one but they've lost the last three they lost one nil to Wimbledon with two reds of course on Saturday but game were well done ba basically after he gave the reds he, he blew two one defeat to Walsall two one defeat to Sutton a massive shock there a 2-1 window against Notts County a 3-1 win against Morecambe before that so they were on a decent one and actually in Carl Robinson's first eight games to unbeaten so you know it, it shows how far down they were down there and the fact is they, they, they're still in it they, they need points because the teams down there are putting pressure on them but I think they'll be well well safe to be honest with you and uh, you know points on the board is what matters our last five 1-0 win against Gillingham on Saturday a 1-1 draw to Grimsby 2-0 win against Tramere 3-0 defeat to Harrigan a 3-0 defeat to Notts County so we're, we've had 25 points from 20 away games this season, which is actually left less points than we've got at home, but obviously, you know, you, you should be winning your own games. And we always think, well, we're good away from home, you know, we, we, we might do well here. We've had one away win in our seven that were against Wrexham. Pretty concerning. Our last 10 games against Salford, don't really do head-to-head, -head, but when you've only played 10 games against the team, it's a bit more interesting. Our first five weren't great we didn't win our first five games against them however the tides turned and now we have not lost uh, we, we've lost one in five sorry so recently we've turned the tide on them and we, we, we've done a number on them more recently um and obviously got Graham Alexander the manager when the first came up and uh, got them got them doing all right there and, and he, he did a good job at, at Salford uh just before I go any further as well I've just remembered because uh, I've just looked at my notes and I forgot to mention this as well. Curtis Till, nearly mentioned him as a key player, decent enough centre-back for Salford. He scored two goals in his career against Sam Walker and he scored uh, one goal against City as well, winning three in his last five against City. So that, that's not that's not great. Uh, so what can we expect? I've mentioned it a lot at the beginning. Um, if it's anything like the last game, it's going to be uh, anti-football. It's going to be like watching rugby. It's going to be... It's, 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 just, it's going to be nasty uh, from Salford, to be honest with you. Uh, dirty, aggressive, frustrating. Uh, they make poor decision making in the final third. That's something I've, I've seen when I've seen a bit of Salford this season. Uh, the, the press high up, they're quite aggressive in the press. They, they play a high tempo game, one touch passing, uh, one two touch, three touch passing in, in around there. But they will look to kill our momentum and our tempo. So it's about managing the game um, and trying to combat that by playing direct passes you know look for Cook look for Kavanagh to make the ones in behind their defence because when they're pressing high there's going to be gaps in there and I think that can, that'll that suit us a bit more when teams press high especially under Alexander we, uh, we're we better because we're better sitting in deep and counter attacking and using the space I think that'll probably suit us a bit more Carl Robinson is aggressive on the touchline obviously Sam Allardyce is best best friend as well you know if, if you ever listen to Sam Allardyce, you know you, you, you can't get Carl Robinson out of his mouth. Every time, you know Carl Robinson, you know pop pops up, he's always in his mouth. Um, Carl Robinson always talking about him. I think they they, they shared a room together as well, whilst uh, he was Crystal Palace manager Sam Allardyce as well. So something going on there. Um, but yeah, I rate him as a manager. To be fair. Be interested how they do next season, but you know he did a great job at Oxford, did a great job at MK, didn't quite go well at Charlton, but spends 
a fair bit of time in his jobs and uh, I'm sure he'll get it right at Salford. Like I say, next season will be interesting, a lot of pressure on them. How will he do with that? He's managed 13 games against Bradford City, only winning the three games, drawing four and losing six against us. So we'll see if we can pile on a bit more misery. Only winning three and 13 against us isn't a great record, so hopefully that can continue. My starting 11, I'm aware I've, I've gone on a bit already, so Sam Walker in goal. Oyogoki at the back, Platt and Kelly, those three were fantastic. Um, you know, Oyogoki off the line, Platt for me, man of match, and Kelly, you know, underrated. Looking back at the game a bit more, I saw a bit more that he did, but I didn't see, so he, he was brilliant again. Aladdin right wing back, something I didn't notice when I watched the game was his long throws. He, you know, he, he was brilliant at long throws, something we focus on clearly because we're much better at defending set pieces much better at attacking them, corners, free kicks and throw-ins. We had a lot of chances from Allardy's long throws and Wimbledon on Saturday, uh, Balmer, their right back, he, ha he has a wicked long throw, it's, it's like Rory Delaps and he put in a few really good long throws, they scored from one, so that they struggled against it, hopefully Allardy, not quite as good as his, but he put some really good flat ones in towards Cook and we got a couple of chances from him, so hopefully that's something we can keep working on and something that we can maybe uh, target against Salford. Terry Wright keeps his place in left wing back. Now, I know against Barrow I put Richards in. After that, I thought I would have started at right, actually, because, one, keep the winning team. Two, th this attacking threat, I think, will really help us against uh, Salford. But, you know, I, 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 I was surprised, really, because he, he did really have a really good game. And Richards has looked a bit shaky in the last month, so I would keep Tyke right there because I, I thought he would massively improve. So definitely deserves to to play again. The midfield three be interesting how Smallwood does. Uh, you know, I, we've Walker and Point in that midfield three against uh, London Watson and whoever they're playing in, in place of what because I think. London Watson, I do like those two. They're inconsistent, but they're quite aggressive, tenacious midfielders. Up against Walker and Point, be interested to see how those creative flair players do against them. And I'd be interested to see how, how that sort of works as a midfield three, but it's one that I want to see. With Kavanagh joining Cook as well, some of that we saw against Gillingham. Like I say, Kavanagh and Cook, I think they could be important. Playing direct, you've got Kavanagh making the ones in behind and dropping deep. You've got Cook hopefully holding the ball up and hopefully he's a bit more on it than he was against Gillingham. I'm going to go over 2-2 draw. I'm going to back Andy Cook to get both goals. I think he's going to be firing. I think he's going to be up for it. I think he's going to be ready to go. I think he's going to be right on it. I, I, I watched the game back and, and uh, he had a... He had a he had a better game than I thought actually, he held the, held the ball up more than I thought he did and there were a lot of things that didn't go his way and that's that's Paul McCook, when it doesn't quite go his way he moans a bit more but um, I think he'll be on it, I think he'll be right on it. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on everything we discussed, um, let me know your score predictions, your lineups and all that in the comments down below, like the video if you, go on to do, if you did go on to do so and subscribe if you're new, all the support is massively appreciated, have a good one.